Hello and welcome to this CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we're going to be working on an open source project for sustainable urban design. We want to make it a little bit easier for developers to get some of the uh, dependencies running on their computers. Specifically, we'll more than likely be using the Postgres database with the PostGIS extensions. And we don't can't really expect everybody to install those uh, at an operating system level. So we're going to look at how to at least get that running with Docker, um, if not Dockerizing the whole app. I don't think we necessarily have to commit to running the entire app in Docker in development, at this point at least. Um, I think that would just add a little bit too much friction to the development process. But certainly, spinning up uh, and down uh, a Postgres Docker image makes sense that you don't need it to be running on your computer all the time just when you're developing. So we're, I'm just kind of searching right now. This is a not a tutorial session. This is just a live coding hangout. And I usually try to summarize the hangouts towards the end of the video. So if you're uh, just wanting to see the result, you can skip to the last uh, segment of the video in the last 10 minutes or so. So we'll get some tea. I'll just check that we're on the chat. Okay, good to go. Um, Yeah, I've just been really conscious about keeping dependencies to a minimum here and only introducing things when they're absolutely needed. We know there's already a requirement for a database. We're not going to be uh, working with SQLite. And the more I work with the OpenStreetMap data in previous live streams, I've realized the um, need for storing that data locally and being able to query it uh, with spatial indexing and things like that. So let's just see if we can take one step forward here. This was been this was merged, so let me go ahead and refresh things. It does come up on the screen one second, let me just authenticate. The project structure, we've got, um, essentially we have an app, it's a Django Wagtail app in the platform folder. We've got a series of experiments, uh, first a user interface prototype and some experimental notebooks for various types of code that we'll be integrating into the back end, the Django app, and some design and documentation artifacts. And the platform is where we're concerned right now. This Django app, it's going to be using a database. I don't think I need this right now. So by default, we're just using the SQLite database. So the source data science has a, an example of how to use post, Postgres, run that locally.
and I really don't want any uh, of the developers to even have to do most of these steps. We'd like, I think, just to spin up the Postgres instance and have a ready user and password and just connected, already pre-configured with uh, the Django app. PG admin might be a good tool, but there's a few other database clients. So let's see if there's just a way to get this Postgres image or the Post GIS image up and running. So at the very least, in our readme, we can put the user in database and just make a note that it will, it'll have to be configured in Django. There's also a couple of PostGIS images available. Hard to tell which one would be the best one to use. That's pretty straightforward. All right, so let's see if I've got Docker installed locally. I just refreshed my operating system. remember it every time I try to install Docker on Ubuntu I've got some kind of weird problem but since 2004 is a long-term support edition I believe they should have official packaging so maybe it won't be a big deal oops going back to add minor to add myself to the Docker group, I remember that. And the internet is so full of junk, increasingly it's just information. This is such a junky website. This is another reason where I'm 
why I'm uh, such a fan of DigitalOcean, not only are they very affordably priced, their service offering is really robust and their documentation is great. It's not so super spammy. Um, I think it's kind of a great value they add in general to people who aren't even their customers. One moment. I hope I don't have to uh, restart. So let's go ahead and try to run this PostGIS one. And I think we'll want to put a, a volume. In a specific location in the OpenStreetMap data, it's pretty big. I think it's like 25 gigs. So. Um, we won't necessarily want to download the whole thing to local dev development environment. We'll have to figure out how to go forward with that. But first step is just getting this uh, database available. Hey, Voimar, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm not blocking any ads. That's right, I haven't installed anything <laughs> lately. Let's see. I just refreshed my operating system. So, what do we use? Um, I can't even remember the name of it in any case. It's not Adblock Plus, it's. Um, I think there was something with Adblock Plus that was controversial, wasn't it? Is there a Mu or is it like a lightweight ad blocker or something? Mu. Ubuntu doesn't have rolling release, no. Uh, there's a few uh, Debian derivatives that. Do I guess, or wait a minute? Well, I don't know. Tumbleweed. What's the tumbleweed? That's uh, that's not a Debian derivative. That's um, OpenSUSE. Yeah, I've thought about using OpenSUSE. Uh, just it's not Debian based, unfortunately. So. I guess there is a rolling release. Okay, a rolling Rhino. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if I want to go down that path. I think um, I haven't had any major problems with dependencies being outdated, with being able to install PPAs and stuff like that, personal package archives and whatnot. Uh, things have been pretty fresh in just the main, main line. Uh, it's really just um, the only problem I've had is with Docker, and it's because they didn't package. Docker for the non-LTS release. The official Docker packages. Yeah, how did you get Ubuntu on your phone? What kind of phone is it? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Alright, so then um, I guess now, what, what do we have the thing running in? What's my password? <laughs> Some post you have. My secret password. All right, so let's see. Um, there's a couple database clients I like using dBeaver. Uh, I should actually be able to connect this with QGIS. It has support for PostGIS. Oh, you got a Pine phone, cool. Aren't those pretty much like very experimental, at least like very development devices? Very much development devices. I close my panels for data sources. There we are. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and see if we can connect to a um, PostGIS on localhost, new connection. Um, we'll read this in documentation real quick.
Postgres is the user and then the secret password. All right, maybe make sure, so I pulled it, did, did, is it running though? Mm. Okay, so one second. Maybe that's, no, you have to put a database in there. But it's cool that we got Ubuntu on phones. I, I, I've been waiting for that. Uh, what was that? What's the operating system? Um, the name of the project that's 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 creating the Ubuntu for phones. Didn't Canonical kind of put that down and let now it's left to the community to maintain? UV ports is a community, yeah. They took care, they took it up. Can you plug it in, in uh, to a, a monitor and kind of have that um, kind of unified experience? So the database Postgres should be there. Hmm. But maybe it's not exposed on the local network. Probably need this part of the command. I'm gonna put this in a shell script or something. Maybe a Python script. So it's cross platform. So wait a minute. Yes, so it's running internally, but it's not. Uh, does this mean it's not exposing that port to my local computer? Command. Five four two two five four two two. Oh, did you get like a pre-order? Is it is it for general? Is it generally available now, or is it still for kind of like the um, early adopters, early supporters? I mean, it's not that bad. I, I kind of have this image of it like being just a, like a uh, what is that a PCB board or something like with prickly soldering pins. 
exposed in your pocket, kind of snagging against your pocket lining, but this actually is not too bad. Pine 64. Mm, and it runs K uh, KDE, cool. It's decently priced. Oh yeah, there's the convergence desktop. Hmm. What's convergence package? Three gigs RAM. It might work in the United States, certainly in uh, Europe, it should work. Very cool. Yeah, I haven't been keeping up to date with this. <laughs> oh, this hub thing right here? Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. It might not replace the desktop uh, re development computer, but that would be really cool if you could get it, your development setup so simplified that most of it could be done in the cloud or something like that. And you can just take your development environment around with you in your pocket. Whoa, that'd be trippy. I should try that. Yeah, you know, like VS Code is starting to run in the cloud. That, you know, I think we still have heavy memory requirements, memory footprint, and you would want a, a second display, so you couldn't really carry that around with you. But you know, plugging it in, going from home to office with your with your development computer in your, in your pocket would be cool. All right, so what am I doing wrong here? So the difference I see is perhaps an outdated documentation uh, issue, but uh, this is April 16th, this is pretty new. Down here under ports, I, I don't see that it's uh, got that arrow like it's being exposed. So let me just run this. I don't know where the default volume will be created, but I just want to get this running. This is too much. It should be just possible to spin up a Postgres instance and just connect, like expose the ports to your local computer, right? And then spin it down when you're done with it without having to even think about Docker anymore at that point, aside from turning it on and off. You know, I'm asking too much, or maybe I'm asking the wrong question, but it seems like. That would be a pretty ideal use case, so. Mm -hmm. So we've got, I'm just gonna try this one more time in QGIS. Logo host, default um, password should be available. I don't know what this service is. Connection was refused, so that's a good sign, isn't it? It's not a timeout. Is this server running a local host and accepting TCP connections? I'm gonna try this with DBVer, maybe to... QGIS messages are less than helpful here.
Oh, it's on. That's right. It's got a snap. What kind of apps are available on the Pine Phone uh, in general? The um, it's like kind of an Ubuntu app store. Or how does that work? What what can you install on the phone? Connect to a database. This DBver is really powerful. It's got all these uh, database adapters. It's pretty phenomenal. So we're going to connect to the popular PostgreSQL. It's five four three two exposed, right? Refused. Hmm. This is why I'm kind of hesitant to use Docker to begin with, because it just is a pain to work with. Apparently, you have to be very familiar with it. I, I just want something really simple to get people up and running with the project, but at the same time, kind of balance that simplicity with the fact that we've got complex requirements. Did I run this wrong? Is it capital P? P port. I suppose a Docker file would do this in your case, but uh, hmm. <laughs> all right, you're gonna check, check out a Docker on your phone. Dev2 is a cool website, not too spammy. Cool. This looks good. Can change the Yeah, you know, specify local volume. And then I need an environment variable or So I can just do this from any directory.
Mm, maps and navigation. Yeah. It'd be cool to see more services built on top of OpenStreetMap. Valid config, uh, config option. It's either I've done something wrong with the environment or this directory doesn't exist or what? this to the way they've got it here. Yeah, you'd have to kind of converge it. Um, you'd need a company to aggregate them, but there are open source standards like GTFS and, com and uh, public transport operators are publishing these GTF feeds. Uh, and there's aggregation, there's open source aggregating um, projects like these routing projects. Uh, what's a graph hopper, for example? Has, our, I think, scripts to pull these GTFS um, feeds into a database. You just we need some kind of concentrated effort to host it and manage it. That's one thing. So we've got the software available and the data available, but what we're missing is a kind of a organization or an initiative. And I think the ecosystem is there. We've got to come together as a community. work developers yeah in your case we might be integrating something like a routing service like graph hopper into our this sustainable urban development project um, we don't necessarily need timetables but the uh, being able to incorporate um, transport analysis is a, is a key part of designing s sustainable urban environments. All right, so when was this ri written? 2019, it's not that long ago. <laughs> How am I getting this invalid interpolation format for PG option services? So, it doesn't like that. Mm. Whoa. Again, what if I try without interpolation, but this time leaving the quotes? I don't know. This is solely guesswork, but mm, like this is that satisfy? It's uh -uh, same error. Uh, I don't even
Yeah, from what I can tell, I should just be able to specify it directly and the value. Or pass it through. But, uh, I think we we'll just I'll specify it. Like, what, I'm not sure why this doesn't work. For services. Okay, so I mean, it's so service PG. There's a config option in here that's not in, it's not happy with. Oh, Voimar, do you know what the heck is going wrong here? Yeah, and I think there's a couple open source um, Android apps uh, that give you routing for a few cities in the world. I don't remember. One bus away, and you could probably just kind of, um, you know, add the link to the GTFS feed for your uh, particular transport uh, network if it's not already in there. Let me double check here. I don't know, again, how to, this would work with the Pine phone, but. And you would need a open trip planner server that's hosting these up. Yeah, this might be a good way to get something something going. And this is kind of what I'm hinting, hoping will occur, is that these community will coalesce around these projects, not only as end users, but as like stewards and providing service providers, basically. And if we need financing, then let's just chip in. But right now, there's open trials at Software Foundation, for example. This could be a good way. 501c3, so yeah, it's tax deductible donations in the United States. But yeah, cool. All right, I don't want to get too far off the trail here. Hmm, but why is this not working? So is my YAML wrong? So yeah, let me just try not to set the value here. I'll just say there, you know, we need this environment variable. That's key, that's clear. And we'll pass through that variable, that's fine. And then we will, we should just build a Docker Compose up at this point. Oh yeah, in this Docker Compose file, you think that could be it. Man, all right. Did it open it? This code, oh, did it do it? What's going on code? I've installed it through a snap. I don't know if maybe that's, I'm not in KDE anymore.
Did I get it? Yes. All right, so yes, white space, you say. Yeah, that would make sense. I did a copy and paste there or some linting. But, uh, and let's see if there's a YAML lint. Reformat art, yeah. There is trailing white space. Unsupported config option for service. Hmm. I mean, even the Docker plugins able to kind of infer what's going on here, more or less. Bad indentation. So yeah, it's. I mean, in a way, it's linting it. So for real, what is the deal? Yeah, didn't fix it. Well, one thing, hmm. It seems like it should be the way to go. For these environment variables, they're not using dashes to it. For the indentation. Does that make it a dictionary? I just want to pass it through. Uh, well, PG is the name of a service. From what I understand, each of your services has to have a name, and you can call it whatever you want. So I think the service is in a Docker Compose file. Well, I'm missing the version, so maybe that's something. Uh, but in any case, you know, you can run specify multiple services. Service is the key. Postgres is fine. That's 
but this is just telling me it's we have a Postgres service, we have a PG admin service. Yeah, and here they're just setting it directly, so it's a dictionary. I don't know if I need to. I don't think I need to quote the strings. Oops, I already did that. Actually, I prefer that. Leave it running. I'll come back to this restart rule, but that might be part of the deal. Oh yeah, and I touched the PG, but A little bit of different error. That's <laughs> usually a good sign, but it's also pretty nondescript. I can't connect to the Docker daemon. This could be a common one, and I might need to just reboot. Yeah, I've had to take an hour just to try to get Postgres uh, running in a Docker container. This kind of stuff is just mind-boggling. Why it should be so difficult? I mean, you can chalk it up to ignorance, but I think there's also a, a, um, just we have way too much complexity in our development process and tooling every step of the way. I just want to get back to developing this the tool, the software at hand. Hmm, okay, so let me just double check. If this isn't that I need to reboot or something like that. A lot of people experiencing this. <laughs> Hmm. 
So I think Docker's already running. How do you remove a uh, bash? Just on your shell. Hmm. Dang. This is an old error too, man, dang. Yeah, how am I supposed to know what port that is though? Dang it, wrong button. Okay, so Docker's not even able to connect to itself now. Uh, so at least I was able to do Docker PS earlier. Have I made backwards progress? I can do it here. That's really trippy. Now it's working. So something weird with the uh, Visual Studio Code shell. Hmm. Trippy. Too many confounding parts. All right, good. Now it's running, and I should be able to hop over to DBeaver with uh, only a couple of tears shed. Cool, dang, got it. We got something going. Okay, report. It was a success. So, try to wrap up in about 10 minutes <laughs> with some tangible progress. Let me think here. So, what we're actually after 
is post GIS with a table, perhaps. Um, maybe Django will create those. I'm going to come to that another night. I'm already getting tired. Uh, it's been a little bit of a fight with Docker. No problem, though. Just, just chalk it up to learning. It, always learning every day. So this is cool. Now if I kill it, then I should. It's stopped. That's the. That's exactly what I want. I just don't want it to run permanently. I would like it to start and stop on command. Very cool. All right. Let's do a little bit different. To Docker image. And I think um, you know these volumes are okay. It'll create the volume in the person in the developer's directory, so it's obvious. I could even call it Docker data, uh, Postgres data, or something like that. To make it more obvious, and maybe it'll automatically create that. So, what's our Docker image? Yeah, I don't even know how it worked. I'm a bit confused. So, hard coding the password for now. We might, I don't want to make it too complicated on developers. So let's try it again. Yeah, I think this is just that I just installed Docker during the stream, but I'm in a, the group. People don't know how secret my password is here. Yeah. Log out and log back in so your membership is reevaluated. Alright, cool. I think this is good. Um, hey, Dr. Unafraid, welcome back. Haven't seen you in a while. So here's what I'm going to do. Create a branch. Copy this Docker Compose file into I don't know how cluttered I want this root directory to get. So I'll just paste it in. I'm, I'm un under good faith or good uh, the assumption it'll work. I'll have to just try again on stream 
next time I'm getting kind of tired. Uh, but I think we worked it out. Cool, what you've been busy with? Have you, uh, I think you, you were last telling me you were gonna, you had like a web scraping idea and a project you were gonna work on or a business you were gonna start or something? How's that idea been going? Have you been able to develop that a little bit further? <sighs> All right, so we'll update our readme also. For convenience, we've been. Uh, Oh, web scraping. Oh yeah, so the whole the whole DOM structure structure changed there. Yeah, it would be interesting if they had data dumps. In general, I just stay away from Quora. <laughs> I don't want to touch that place, that site anymore. It's kind of one of those janky, junky sites on the web, increasingly junky.
Cool. Oh yeah, that would be a much nicer way of doing it, wouldn't it, Voimar? Something you can get structured information back. What kind of uh, data are you looking for from, um, uh, what is it called again? Anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. Quora API. Mm, yeah, uh, so are, what are you interested in? What kind of core data are you interested in? User activity? Mm, posts? Are you trying to just republish Quora articles on, on your own site or something? Or what's the deal? Are you doing graph analysis on the Quora users and posts? Or what uh, is it? Can you t what can you tell us about it? About your idea? Very cool. Mm, yeah, that's what I found too, that unofficial Quora API. Yeah, I think Quora is a pretty walled garden. I don't think they readily uh, publish their data to be used on uh, third party services. That's one of the main reasons I just stopped using it as their walled garden. -ness. I wonder if I could flatten this uh, documentation a little bit and then nested a lot of sections there. Yeah, that's another question. Would, it seems like they would throttle you if you're making too many requests to Quora. That was kind of the thing with LinkedIn. They were, they even took that company to court that was kind of web scraping all their data, but it was a favorable decision, I think, in terms of uh, freedom of information, so to speak, that the court ruled that web scraping is legal if there's public information. You can use that that data for your own purposes. You can scrape it, um, but that doesn't mean that LinkedIn or Quora wouldn't put in technological barriers to doing so. And I'm pretty sure it'd be fairly easy to see that you're hitting so many pages at such a rate uh, that this is like a bot-like activity. Oh, cool. Do you have the, any code on GitHub, Dr. Unafraid? I think I might have just a little bit of tea we can... No, I'm out of tea. I've got a basic Docker Compose file. It's probably a good good junction to just call it a night and relax. It's Sunday evening. You guys, hey, Dr. Unafraid and Voimar, it's been good to see you both. It's nice hanging out with people and uh, chatting while scratching my head and kind of figuring things out and, you know, experiencing a little fr minor frustrations, minor setbacks, but I think overall, uh, today we were able to get to a good stopping point. Um, I'll test it out again a little bit off stream once I've logged out and logged back in. I think this is going to work more or less though. We'll push the changes up. Um, there's actually some pretty cool things happening with this project from my perspective. I could give you a quick uh, tour of those. Basically we're converging a couple of experimental folders now. They're no longer branches. They've been merged in with master. We've got a user uh, interface, a basic one, just to show the idea. Uh, that we're able to run and essentially render a slippy map with some menu on the side that lets you specify different lenses, urban lenses, like different ways of looking at an urban environment. And um, I don't know if in the long run that's going to be quite how we slice things up uh, independently. The idea comes from these games like um, SimCity or city skylines where you look at one aspect of an urban environment at a time. Sometimes you look at the utilities like electric or water and you'll just have tools and a view that lets you hone in on, that, on the work that's related to 
laying a pipe network or an electrical network and making sure everybody's got coverage. Then another lens would be for fire coverage or education and healthcare. Those I'm calling lenses because they kind of are ways that you filter information, see what's relevant and have tools that are relevant to that job. But one thing we were able to do is actually with real world OpenStreetMap data, conduct an analysis of amenities, um, specifically food sources and, and transport locations uh, in the city of Tampere. But this is actually code you can run in a Jupyter notebook and you can specify a location anywhere in the world. So your own city or we tried it in North Korea, we uh, also tried it in Germany in a small town in Texas as well. Got varying results but the key is all you have to change in this notebook is the location and run all the subsequent cells. Uh, the data aren't quite homogeneous in all those locations so you'll definitely have different results and you might need to tweak a couple of things, a couple of the queries, but yeah, we get some OpenStreetMap data back about, these are the all the buildings in Tampere, the footprints there. Uh, there's something like, uh, I don't remember how many, it was quite a few, 40,000 or something. Yeah, here we are, 40,000 buildings, 5,000 bus stops, 137 food sources that are supermarkets, convenience stores, and bakeries. What we wanted to do is plot those on the map and see how many of those buildings, we don't even know if they're residential buildings, but how many of them have access to those amenities. This is a real world need. People need to have access to food and transportation in order to live uh, comfortably and not have to rely on a car, for example, to go to the grocery store or something like that. The areas in green are neighborhoods that pretty have pretty good coverage uh, from an arbitrary uh, standpoint that I just said one kilometer within a food source is a is a convenient distance. Um, and then when I combine food sources and transport, it gets a little more spotty. And basically, an urban designer could look at this map and say, hey, what's the deal? Why does this area have such poor coverage? Oh, well, our data might be missing here. There may be some food sources that are not in the data. Or the analysis could be off. Maybe we have a different definition of convenient. We think of five kilometers as convenient. Our goals are not to reduce traffic or vehicle transport, uh, private automobiles, uh, but rather have you know some other goals, who knows. And that's what we're trying to do now is converge this analysis um, capability back into the Django project. It also gives you the portion of uh, buildings that meet that criteria. So 70% of the buildings in Tampere didn't meet my kind of arbitrary um, uh, definition of uh, having access to amenities when combining a one kilometer uh, radius around food sources and a 250 meter radius around transport um, stops, basically bus stops. So again, the goal is that all of the parameters can be tuned and tweaked for allowing for individual um, exploration of the various ur urban environments and to meet your own goals. So this code works, it's Python notebook. We're gonna, the reason we're dockerizing this project is so that we can start working with OpenStreetMap data and, and kind of caching it into a, a Postgres database because it's big and some of these queries um, to pull down data directly from OpenStreetMap, they take a while and it's probably hitting the OpenStreetMap servers more than is necessary. So at some point we'll just wanna have that data locally so we can filter it, do geo proximity searches, things like that in an efficient way that even in Python, I think it would have troubles being um, as w well optimized as the PostGIS server for doing spatial indexing and things like that to enhance query performance. So yeah, that's a little preview of what we've been working on over the last few days. And today was just a sort of, I thought, a low hanging fruit day of getting a Docker Compose image up. Uh, good question, Boymar. I'm not sure who I, would, who I could recommend. Honestly, I need to check out the Twitch streamers as well to find some other uh, birds of a feather. But yeah, I'll make it a point to look for other streamers similarly. Or if there's even a, a different source or maybe a different streaming community than Twitch that is more software development oriented. Uh, I don't know. 
The reason I'm using Twitch is because it's convenient and uh, Open Broadcaster Studio has, uh, it pretty much recommends Twitch as the default. Um, other times I just have, well recently and a couple of years ago, we were just kind of streaming directly from the Jitsi Meet, the hangout on codebuddies.org. Um, that had various pros and cons. One of the cons is that it, the stream quality is kind of low. Uh, I, I do want it to be a participatory thread, a participatory stream as well, but uh, sometimes uh, some of the participants would be a little disruptive, uh, which is it's manageable. But yeah, I, I don't know specifically. I think codebuddies.org is really the place. And Voimar, if I, if I recall, that's, w that's where you found the stream from, was codebuddies.org, correct? Now I did just quick Google search and actually might have a quick answer for you, Roy Mart, uh, or something that we can both explore. Uh, awesome developer streams. Let me just pull it up over here. These awesome lists are great in general th to find things um, that are interesting uh, relating to one another. Uh, um, and about freelancing, I think the key is hmm, start building a portfolio of projects that you're making, even if it's just reading some of these books, following along and putting that, the code from those books in a GitHub repository so that you have, uh, you're showing initiative and you're doing your work publicly. And if you're interested in freelancing, there's several freelance marketplaces on the internet. Um, you know, I'm not gonna recommend any specific one of those um, and they're pretty competitive and honestly I think those freelance marketplaces sort of promote this culture of undercutting, uh, undermining the livelihoods of one another and kind of jobs tend to go to the more or less lowest bidder. Um, so I don't know, you know honestly with this uh, Jerry Life project we hire a freelancer and uh, we're actually, you know she's done excellent work and we're uh, she actually was asking for much lower than uh, her skill level is and and we fortunately were able to give her a better offer than her initial ask uh, that strikes a balance in so anyway um, of affordability also in just being fair because um, the market you know I don't know how I'm quite kind of losing my train of thought but essentially yeah don't sell yourself short and uh, don't let kind of people take advantage of you because it is it's a skill and I think a lot of freelancers fall into a trap of just trying to get the job uh, by bidding low and then you end up kind of burning yourself out so yeah it looks like there's a bunch of twitch streamers we can explore these I don't know how active most of these streamers are I might even add my stream there but anyway uh, tons of people streaming on twitch and YouTube so th those are the main ones and I kind of bounce back and forth a little bit between Twitch and YouTube. Okay, so just uh, as promised, I'm gonna do a real quick summary of what we did on today's stream so that people who are watching this on YouTube can actually just hop to the end of the video, the TLDR section. So, in summary, today was a bit of a struggle, but we worked through, it just mainly because I don't know what I'm doing most of the time, which is par for the course and that's quite okay. It means we're and I'm pushing myself a little bit out of my comfort zone. I didn't feel too far out of my comfort zone. And that's when you know you want to pull back and work on something that is a little more achievable. But I did feel some frustration. And I think it was mainly that I didn't have Docker installed on my computer and uh, installed it during the stream. And there's some follow-up steps you have to do on Ubuntu to make sure you've got permission to access the Docker daemon so you won't get a bunch of errors. And the errors are kind of nondescript. But honestly, I also found a thread of like hundreds of commenters that had that same error. So I think there's a little bit of like just room for compromise there in terms of uh, trying to simplify the developer experience by not adding a bunch of requirements, but then which is the goal of Docker uh, so that we have this one requirement and it allows us to containerize um, multiple um, 
components in their software architecture. So our goal here is to start working with the first class database, Postgres, with the PostGIS extension. And make it easy for new developers and myself to spin up uh, a database. I'm not going to the extent of dockerizing the whole project. I think that would be overkill at this point. I'll still just rely on the manage pi command to run the thing. But I would like to spin up and put down a Docker server uh, just so I have it running during development. And that's about it. We you know, more or less copied and pasted this um, Docker Compose um, file and through reading several um, documentation sources. But again, I had to um, just really closely read the docs. It's it, In fairness, it, it is well documented that you have to add yourself to the Docker group. And I knew that in the back of my mind because I've had to do that before. And just some of the things I pieced together was about volumes where uh, Postgres is going to store its data uh, in the local development environment is so that the container can uh, when the container goes down, the data is persisted across session, sessions. Uh, we're passing an environment variable here to set the password to a very generic password. I've noted in the README that this is only for de local development and for simplicity and convenience. Not to run this um, in production. We'll be working on a separate Docker file and Docker Compose file for a production deployment, but we're really far from that. And uh, yeah, Dr. Unafraid there is relating that do <laughs> Docker can be challenging to work with. And the goal is to simplify things. So I hope that by my uh, going through these struggles and at least creating the Docker Compose image, uh, other developers won't have that same struggle going forward. Was all they have to do is make sure Docker is installed and configured, and hopefully things will work for them. Uh, I think that's about it, though. It was a relatively short stream, and uh, we did a recap of the code progress so far with the um, notebook on proximity analysis uh, which we've reviewed in previous sessions in any case. So thank you very much Dr. Unafraid. Uh, it's nice to talk to you. Thanks for stopping by again Voimar. Let me know Voimar if you uh, find any other uh, awesome streamers out there that are doing free and open source development work. I'd also be interested to stop by their, supreme, uh, their streams and support them. Uh, code Buddies um, Hangouts maybe aren't streamed as often. I think it would be nice if more people would stream our Code Buddies Hangouts, so, to, so our our community has a bigger uh, shines more light into the developer community. I think CodeBuddies.org is a really great community. So on that note, if you're interested in streaming or live coding or hanging out with other like-minded free and open source software developers, stop by CodeBuddies.org. CodeBuddies is also an open source project on GitHub at GitHub.com/CodeBuddies. Or if you'd like to get involved with the Sustainable Urban Design Project, stop by github.com slash sustainable urban design. Thanks for everybody hanging out in the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, do feel free to leave any questions or comments in the video. I'll try to answer this promptly. Have a great day. I hope you're doing out there. I hope you're doing well out there and stay healthy.